Alrighty, so I have a lot of videos in the works right now. Um, in front of me here is a Royal Model P in black. That was a parts machine that I realized was a little bit too nice to be a parts machine, um, so I'm restoring that one completely. And if we can swivel the camera here, we have a Royal Model P in black. It is a complete, total, almost frame-up restoration, and I'm hoping to get that done soon. But what I really wanted to talk about today is a little bit of a tutorial. Make sure we're focused. Okay, so let's just cut to the chase here. I've been rambling on a lot. Sometimes when you're dealing with key tops on a machine, you will come across an issue where either the key cup of the machine is loose or has completely come off of the machine. And I'm going to show you very quickly how easy it is to reattach these. It is probably one of the easiest keyboard related repairs that you can do. Now I do have this set of key ring pliers. Uh, these are Charles Goose key ring pliers and I will have a video coming out on these soon. Unfortunately, <clears throat> my audio for that video did not pan out. Um, it didn't erase the original track that I recorded for a different video, so we have two audio feeds that are now mushed into one. So I think I'm going to have to work on doing a voiceover for that video. So I apologize that that is taking a really long time, but I did have a video planned where I compare these newly made key top pliers with the old key top pliers. So stay tuned with that. I will try my very best to hobble something together that sounds somewhat decent. We generally wouldn't need the key ring pliers for a repair as basic as a single loose key cup. The key ring pliers will help you take apart the key top a lot easier than, say, a razor blade and some gentle prying, but it can be done without them, so don't worry if you don't have these tools. Okay, so let's quickly go over the terminology and construction of a key top. I've thrown around a couple of words lately, and we'll go over those real quick. So this is the key cup. This little divot bowl shaped piece holds four pieces and that little hole in the middle is where it attaches onto the stem of the key lever. Now inside of that we have this little shim. It sits in there and that's actually what the end of the key lever is kind of riveted down against. And on top of that we'll have the key legend and a piece of key glass, which is about 16th of an inch thick. And finally, the key ring. Now the key ring is what we use those fancy pliers for, but you can get those off just by gently prying up the tabs on the bottom of the key ring and uh, gently pulling that off. The key cup for the asterisk here is present on the machine. It is just really wobbly. So the fix for that is relatively simple. Now this one's in a tricky position because they, I have the um, ribbon selector lever in the way. But essentially what you're going to need is a couple pieces of metal, something non-flammable, you know, that we can stick behind the key cup and then we're going to stick another piece of metal somehow underneath it just to kind of protect the keys at the bottom there. Next thing we're going to need is a dab of solder flux. This is just standard regular liquid solder flux. I always prefer the liquid stuff. We'll just open that up. Take a paintbrush and you know put it put a decent blob in there. We want to coat the entire thing. Now flux is basically a super cleaner and it's a liquid bonding agent and that will help our solder to stay inside the cup. So we're just going to take our solder and a little bit of a wire snippers and take a small portion of that solder off of the roll and just drop it down in there in the key cup. Now a soldering iron is not going to get hot enough to completely bind the solder to some of these metals in here. So we have a propane torch. We're going to get a not a huge flame and we're just going to carefully go in there and melt that solder. Now the solder will turn into a ball and then it will slowly begin to spread all over the base of the cup and once that happens we can take the heat away. And now this key cup is very hot so we're going to quickly 
remove these shields while it's still hot and hold the cap. Now, I know what you're thinking, but it's hot. I shouldn't touch hot metal. Listen, I didn't say this would be easy. Probably one of the easiest keyboard related repairs that you can do. Once that solder cools, there is no going back. Unless, of course, you put the heat shields back and you apply more heat, in which case you risk damaging the machine more. So, try and get it right the first time as best as you can. So as that cools, we are going to move on to our G key, which is a little bit lower down here on the keyboard. And in this instance, the key cup actually came off the oh, oh, cheese. In this instance, the key cup actually came off the machine, so I have put in a few things below the key lever. That's going to help boost that up. It's going to pop down the key cup. Then we're going to take that retainer plate and some flat drop pliers and pop that down as well. Now if you can't get it down, it is not 100% necessary to have that piece in there since we will be soldering. But uh, it does help. It's probably good enough. Now these seals do get hot, so be very careful. This is just sheet aluminum. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. So, same process, once we put that back on, we're just going to take our solder flux, put a generous dab of that in there. And then we're going to take the wire clippers and snip off a very small section of solder. Any type of solder will do. This is lead solder. You know, maybe you don't want to work with lead, that's okay, I get it. Alright, and after everything is lined up, We'll fire up the blowtorch again and uh, give that a healthy bit of heat. So you'll see the solder melt, it'll turn into a ball, and then after a moment that ball will completely sink down or spread around into the cavity and secure itself appropriately. So once again, while these are still hot, very quickly remove them and, well, sometimes that happens. Try and get it right the first time as best as you can. Not what I was hoping would happen. Yeah, that did not work out. Let me move this tripod out of the way. You know, mistakes happen. Just gotta fix them. Oop, that is still really hot. Ow. Now let's come back up to the first key cap that we did. See if I can't get a better angle on that. Alright, so on the first one we did where we were just stabilizing it, we can go ahead and insert a key legend now. Just like that. We're going to want to make sure that that legend is perfectly straight. And then a piece of key glass that's been polished. And then finally the key top, and of course I like to slightly bend out those tabs just a little bit so that we can slip that on over. And then just push it down, make sure it's secure. And we'll go in with the key top seating tool and uh, send that one home. And of course to finalize it we'll flip the plate around and use the flat side of the plates to uh, push all of those on all the way. And I'll do that now just to demo, but normally you complete the entire keyboard first and then you flip the plate on the bottom of the tool. Now we got the uh, flat end under there. And we'll just go in there and make sure all those tabs are pressed flush against the bottom of the key cup. Make sure that's not hot. Eh, it's okay. And we'll place the, uh, the G key legend in there. Put the glass on top of the key there, and grab a key ring. I have one in my parts tray. And again, just gently bend those tabs outwards just a little bit. And seat that ring firmly. And then we'll grab our key top plier and seat it all the way on. 
And there you go. We have successfully reattached the G key and stabilized the asterisk key. And I can finally get this entire machine put back together. And of course, once again, I will flip the plate to the flat side. And just double check that all of those tabs are completely flush against the bottom of the keyboard. And of course, I'll have to do that with every key top on the machine. So anyway, that was the very quick, very easy repair tutorial on reattaching a key top on just your everyday generic typewriter. So yeah, that's all. Goodbye.